Hello and welcome to our latest Gower Society Youth Activity. Now, we are still in my garden. This time we're going on a virtual mini beast hunt. Now, unlike plants, I can't guarantee what we will see today because even though I've had a look and found lots of mini beasts, they may not be there when I go back. So we're going to have a look and hopefully we'll see some. Now, if there's anything that you see today that you find in your garden, I'd love to see some photos. So please tweet any photos you have with hashtag Nature Days or share them on the Nature Days or the Gow Society Youth Facebook page. Now, let's have a look around my garden and see what mini beasts we can find. If you look under a log or a rock, then you're almost likely to see wood lice. Wood lice are amazing creatures. They're not insects. They're in the crustacean family, which is actually related to crabs and lobsters. But unlike these, they have seven body segments and each segment has a pair of legs. That's 14 legs. They easily dry out, so you'll always find them underneath something trying to hide from the sun. They feed on decaying wood or leaf litter or even fungi and sometimes dead animals. And they also eat their own poo. Now the reason they do this is because their blood is actually got copper in it, like octopuses, so they have to conserve their copper by eating their poo again. Just found this newt in the flower bed. I'll try and get him out so we can have a proper look. This is a little female newt, as you can see, because if you look at her tail, there's no filament. See, the skin goes all the way down to the back of the tail. And also, if you look at the back legs, the back feet are not webbed. If they're webbed, that would be a male. Now this is probably a common newt, and if I lifted it up I could see if it had spots along its throat. And they usually hibernate in the winter time in the mud in the bottom of ponds. And then they come out and go back to ponds to actually lay their eggs. But in fact they need it nice and wet, so being in the flower bed is not the best place for them. So I'm going to make a little pond for this newt. So that she's got somewhere cooler to go away from the sunlight. <laughs> Come on, let's get you in some more. Is that better? Cool you down a bit. So she's an amphibian, so lives on the land but lays eggs in the water and the young live in the water. They've got gills. They're called tadpoles, even though they don't turn into frogs and they don't come from frogs. And the way, to the way to tell a tadpole from a newt pole is they have their gills on the outside, whereas a newt, um, when they get older, the gills go disappear because they're no longer able to breathe underwater. Tadpoles have their gills internal, and again, they lose them when they metamorphose into frogs. And they've got this long shape, maybe look a bit more like fish with legs the baby tadpole, uh, baby newt poles, as opposed to tadpoles, which look like a blob with a tail and legs later on. Sometimes you may not be able to see the mini beast itself, but you can see signs that it's been feeding. So looking along leaves and see if you can see where it's been eaten is a really clear sign that there's been some mini beasts visiting there. But this one here is not just being eaten, it's also being used as a cocoon. If you look very closely, you can see that the caterpillar has actually folded the leaf around itself and made it into a cocoon. But also this one's actually empty. So this caterpillar has actually already pupated and come out as an adult and flown away. But you can see how good this bush is because you can see it's also laid some eggs underneath the leaves as well. So this tree is not only providing food for the larval stage, the baby stage, but also some offer it to safely metamorphose and then it's come back to lay its eggs. The only thing this tree hasn't got is the flowers for the adult to eat, the nectar. And what flower is this? This plant here, of course, is our wonderful willow tree. And if you look at our spring stroll YouTube video, you can find out all about the willow and how it uses the wind to pollinate and to spread its seeds. If you look really closely, can you see the tiny little caterpillars? How many can you count? They're absolutely microscopic, but in fact they will grow a bit bigger, but only to about one centimetre once they've finished eating all this leaves. And then they'll make themselves a cocoon and then they'll metamorphose into the adult. Now these could be little moth caterpillars, they could be little 
butterfly caterpillars it's very hard to see because they are so small but they're obviously really enjoying eating this willow it's very tasty here's a close-up look at a caterpillar so we can see what it's made out of if you have a look at the front it's got its legs these are the three real legs so we've got six in total three pairs there at the back though we've got four pairs of pro legs now these are like suckers that help it hold on because it's got such a long body it needs to hold on to it with its back as well and the very back we've got the claspers now these are used to walk and to hold on to the foliage if you look very closely you might be able to see some black dots along some of the segments now these are the spiracles and this is how the caterpillar actually breathes so it breathes through these tiny holes through its skin now while it's a larvae, while it's in this stage, it will be eating and that's basically what it does all the time, but it also molts so that it can get a little bit bigger. But not all caterpillars have got the same number of prolegs. This caterpillar is in a group called the loopers because they only have one pair of prolegs at the back. So the bit in the middle has to be held up so they have to move in this looping action in order to not rub a part of their body along the ground. This furry thing here is of gall and it's been laid by a sawfly which laid its egg on the leaf of this willow and then the willow has created a gall around it for it to be living inside. They, they lay eggs on top of plants, in this case on this willow leaf, and then the plant feels the, and tries to itch it. Now the itch that it can't scratch, it tries to get rid of by squirting something at it and that creates a gall which is like a growth from a plant. And this gall is exactly what the animal wants because it protects the babies and then they can hatch out, they can eat the gall and then make their way out once they're ready to be adults and fly around. This is the nest of a spittle bug or a frog hopper. Now this young is laid on the leaf and then the young drinks the sap from the plant and then it wheezes. and as it wheezes, it sends out this foam which then surrounds itself and it protects it from predators. It also protects it from the temperature. This young is called a nymph because unlike the butterfly, it's not completely different from its adult. It's just a little bit different. So after a while, it will then turn into an adult frog hopper, which will then hop off and live its life, sucking the sap out of other plants. This is an adult green shield bug. You can see it's an adult because it's got wings and it's just come out of hibernation through the winter time. If you look down the middle, just between his legs, you can see a line. Now that's actually his mouth parts. And because he's a true bug, he's got sucking mouth parts, which actually means he's got straw and no teeth really. So he sticks that into a plant and then sucks the sap out of it. So there is no way that this bug can hurt you. Now this mini beast is called a mirrored bug, or a stilt bug, or a stink bug, or even just a plant bug. Now these are incredibly common on the plants in Britain, and you can tell them by the triangle on the back of their, underneath their wings. Now the youngsters don't have wings, they're nymphs. They overwinter as eggs inside vegetation, and then they turn into their adults which have wings, and then they can fly around and you find them all over different habitats all over the UK. So you're probably the most popular thing you'll find in your garden. Another great place to look for mini beasts, of course, is inside flowers. And if you look for pollinators, you'll be able to watch them feeding with their long proboscis, which is their long straw that they're going to suck out the nectar at the bottom of the flower and they'll carry the pollen as they go as a byproduct of them eating. Another amazing mini beast in my garden is the ant. And ants of course live in colonies. Now these colonies can be thousands of ants and they've all got different jobs to do. When a colony gets uncovered like I have done with this lifting up the stone then they will quickly collect all of their eggs and take them underground. And sometimes they do this when the temperature is too cold as well. And they're very good at defending each other and also showing each other the way to find food. So they leave a pheromone trail so that the next ant can find the way to the food. They also are farmers, so they actually bring animals like aphids down into their uh, ant hills and keep them fed on bits of plants or fungi and they milk them for honeydew so they can drink the honeydew and every now and again they eat the aphids as well. So an amazing creature 
really strong, can hold up to 20 times its own weight and really good at defending itself. If ants fight, they fight to the death. This is a cardinal beetle. You can tell by the bright red colour, but it's also a beetle because you can tell by the outer case of its wings, which it has to hold open when it flies. It's also got some really knobbly antennae here, which makes you think that it's a cardinal beetle. I hope you enjoyed our Gow Society Youth virtual mini beast hunt. So please subscribe to the channel and then check in at the Facebook page, the Gow Society Youth Facebook page for the next virtual activity. And if you do take any photos of any mini beasts in your garden, please tweet them with hashtag nature days and share them with us so that the whole Gow Society can actually have a look. Hope to see you again at the Gow Society Youth Activity soon.